After the GH6 announcement last week, I was happy that Panasonic found a way to push the GH series forward. Sure, the camera isn't for me, and I do not plan on upgrading my Panasonic GH5 anytime soon. However, there are a few camera setups that have been on my mind to acquire in the short term in order to get the best and most reliable setup for clients and recording situations. Let's start with exactly where my head's at now. The camera that I was considering several upgrade options for is the Canon R5. This camera has been an absolute workhorse for me and has always given me incredible footage to edit with. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I have not had any issue editing most of the file formats on the camera without the need for proxy files. What made me consider the need to switch was a recent production I needed to film a short while ago. I won't show any footage of that here due to the private nature of the project, but it started out to be a very simple shoot. All I had to do was take pictures of all actors in the project first, then film them in front of a green screen. Now the project seemed simple enough, but I wanted to make sure that I captured the highest quality footage on the camera so that keying and post would be simple. So my plan was, take pictures first, then film in 8K RAW. However, I only got as far as filming the first actor in 8K before the camera began to overheat. So I had to film the rest of the actors in 4K standard. Though unfortunate, the overheating did not stop me from being able to film for the rest of the day. It was just in a much lower quality than I originally desired. So does that mean it's time to beef up my R5 with an Atomos Ninja V Plus? Get an R5C or fork over the most amount of money and get the C70? That's why we're here. In this video, we're going to talk about the features and reasons why you should either stick with the R5 or jump to one of these other setups. I'll assign each arbitrary points for fun, but just know what really matters is what camera and setup you would prefer to use. Ultimately, I made my decision, and I'll walk you through my thought process as we move forward. So let's start with this project you're seeing right here that took place in the fall and is an example of a typical shoot with my camera. We had a small production crew to film a music video, which I'll link in the description below so you can see how everything turned out. Basically, we only had one camera for the whole shoot, the Canon R5. I was a cinematographer for this production and worked closely with the director to get the shots needed but I was also going to be the editor, so I knew what file formats I would want to work with in post. Basically, I wanted the best the R5 can handle, which meant either higher resolution formats or faster frame rates in 4K. So for the shots indoors, I wanted to get some green screen scenes recorded, which was not in the original plan for the day, because I felt that in a short amount of time, we can get footage that can be used to add extra flair to the video that can be thought of afterwards in post-production. My thought was that I can stand at a distance, film in 8K, and leave the camera on a tripod. We can film several takes and then move on from there. As you know, 8K on the R5 will overheat after some time. I didn't care. I pushed the camera to record as much as we needed, and it never came close to overheating at all. Now part of the challenge was that I needed to close the aperture down to about f8 while indoors to ensure that all the girls were in focus, since they were far apart. This meant that ISO needed to be cranked up a bit as I recorded, which is not great for keying out green screen, thanks to the noise it introduces. Thankfully, however, when editing these shots in post and after realizing that ISO was just way too high, I was able to change the ISO to a more reasonable level on the files and still punch in to get some extra shots that I wanted. If I recorded in any other format, I would not be able to do this. And the shots basically would have been useless without a painstaking amount of time to fix. But what if I shot with the Atomos Ninja V Plus? If I had the Atomos, the thought of overheating would not even cross my mind. And I probably would have filmed the scene similarly in ProRes RAW 8K. However, the unfortunate occurrence would have happened in post-production. Currently, ProRes RAW does not give you the ability to adjust ISO or white balance in post using Premiere Pro, and forget about DaVinci Resolve, as it's not even slightly compatible with ProRes RAW files. You would need to own a Mac and use Final Cut Pro to get the most out of ProRes RAW, which is not something I'm willing to do. So basically, I would have been in a similar situation as someone who didn't record RAW at all. 
and I would have had trouble keying out the shots. So Atomos does not get a win here. What about the R5C? Well, the R5C would have handled the scene easily, just like the R5. I would have had no overheating issue, and I would have been able to adjust what I needed in post. However, the only downside that I would have faced comes with the R5C's battery limitations. I would have either needed to purchase a battery grip or get an external charger just to keep the camera running. I recorded all the scenes in this internal setup with just two batteries, which were more than enough during the first five hours of this shoot before moving on to the next location. Sure, the R5C could do it, but how many batteries? And how many times would I have to switch out the battery while filming? At that point, it doesn't even seem like an upgrade. R5C is mostly good in this situation, but still has its issues. And finally, what about the C70? The C70 at the time of this recording didn't have the ability to record RAW, but if it did, I would have probably recorded RAW. Unfortunately, the C70 is limited to 4K, which hinders my ability to really crop in as much as I would like to in post. For RAW footage, the R5 and R5C are top choices, but each had their flaws. C70 can do RAW, but not yet, and unfortunately, its resolution isn't quite high enough. And finally, though Atomos Ninja can do the resolution, the inability to work with the RAW files in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve almost completely negates the benefits, with really fat files. So it would be my last choice. Next are the shots where I just lit a plain white wall with different colors for the performers as they dance and move around. I wouldn't need to crop these shots in post, but I would like to get them in a frame rate that would allow for a bit of slow-mo which means that 4K at 60 frames per second were my shots of choice. My experience using the R5 was simply great. No overheating, no battery issues. Everything worked well. However, the one thing I can't get on the R5 was 60 frames per second in RAW. I made sure to get my exposure correct in camera as well as white balance, so it really wasn't necessary. But when working with a client, you can not only work faster with RAW, but also ensure that you get the exact image that you want. Again, R5 performed great, but I wish it could give me just a bit more. Now, if I had the Atomos Ninja V+, I could get 60 frames per second in 5.5K ProRes RAW with an APS-C crop. However, as I mentioned earlier, it's useless without the RAW controls. It's just a fat file. But I will give it a 1-up versus the R5 without it due to its ability to record higher resolutions at 60 frames per second. So kudos to you, Atomos. Now the R5C steps in. I can record 8K at 60 frames per second RAW, or if I want, I can record 5.5K RAW at 60 frames per second internal as well, with the aforementioned APS-C crop. The higher frame rate 8K, however, would require an external battery solution to get it working at its fullest potential, but it's still an option and it's not required. For this shoot with the R5C, I probably would have had a battery solution anyway, thanks to the camera being battery hungry, but I would have stuck with the crop mode of 5.5K RAW at 60 frames per second and shot with that. In this case, it's a situation I probably would have preferred. Good one, R5C. What about the C70? Well, it can shoot 4K 60 frames per second, but can't shoot RAW yet. The 4K would have been a bit more cropped than the crop modes of the Atomos, R5, and R5C without a speed booster. But then the C70 wouldn't have been as sharp as any of the other cameras. Sure, the R5 in 60 frames per second is line skipped, so the C70 is better than that. But if you film using crop mode on the R5 in 60 frames per second, it's actually downsampled and sharper than the C70. But hey, C70 doesn't overheat. That's a plus, right? So when comparing these cameras and some thought, the R5C would have been a clear top choice for this shot. Next up, the production moved outside for some storytelling shots. It was a cold day and everyone had their coats on. For these shots, I wanted to continue to film in 60 frames per second to get slow motion if I needed it, but not necessary. In this situation, overheating on the R5 was not even a thought. There was no way it could overheat. So it's all good from that end. Similar to the previous shots, it's 4K60 with no raw recording. Battery life was not an issue as I was on one battery for all of the outdoor shots and it still had about 60% battery life remaining when all was said and done. 
Now with the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus in this situation, it would have been similar to the previous setup in that I would do 60 frames per second cropped 5.5K in ProRes RAW. Similar upsides and downsides to this as previously mentioned, though I would say that the added brightness of the monitor and its large size does help when shooting outdoors to ensure your shot is framed how you'd like it, with all the additional monitor benefits that you get. But for the actual files recorded, it's all good and there are much cheaper monitors that give you comparable benefits without the internal recording capabilities. I'd say in this scenario, the Ninja 5 Plus is okay, but not necessary, and I probably would have just left it in my camera bag. But what if I had the Canon R5C? Similar to the previous situation, the R5C would have been set to 60 frames per second cropped 5.5K RAW, and then just let her rip. But one thing to note is that since I would be using either a battery grip or some other sort of battery attachment, I would definitely feel the weight of this setup for this advantage, but it would be a preferred choice. And finally, the C70. At the time of this recording, no internal RAW, so it would be 60 frames per second in 4K. But the C70 has an advantage over all the other setups in the outside. Lighting would be more difficult to control outside, and dynamic range would be a definite plus. This is where the C70 shines. It's got about 16 plus stops of dynamic range, and with this, the image could have introduced a lot more details in the highlights and just enriched with an impressive cinematic image. The internal ND filters are also an added bonus. Even at this point with no internal raw recording, lower overall sharpness in its 4K resolution and its slightly bigger body, the C70's image is hands down the image that I would go for in this outside shoot. Give it up to the C70. So at the end of the shoot, things seemed to go well and when I was finally back at my studio editing the R5 footage, one thing was clear. All of the footage captured was exactly what I needed. Yes, the 8K green screen footage was a bit noisy, but like I said, RAW gave me the ability to change the ISO, key out the green, then bump up the exposure back to where I needed it for many shots in the music video. Now when reviewing my arbitrary score, we can see that the C70 scored the lowest. Not at all to say that it's a bad camera. It's got great dynamic range, internal ND filters, built-in audio controls with XLR inputs, large battery, and so much more. However, for this shoot, its advantages did not make it the camera of choice for some shots. Tied for Lois was, well, the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. Again, this scoring is my own personal choice. Yes, ProRes RAW and ProRes files are easy to edit with, but personally, I've never had an issue working with the files from the R5 for smooth editing on my computer. I've got a video up about that on my channel if you'd like to see how I do it. Anyway, this is also one in the bottom because of the lack of true raw post-production workflow in Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. Should this be updated, it would certainly change this score. Next up is just plain old R5. It's an incredible workhorse that gets the job done in many situations. Sure, overheating is an issue, but it's an issue that when you plan ahead, it's something you can work around. And finally, the R5C. It's just a souped up R5 that actually records usable RAW and fast frame rates and no overheating, which would have been very useful in this shoot. But I didn't have the R5C, the C70, or an Atomos recorder. I had the R5. And after this shoot and looking at the footage, I can say that everything turned out perfect. But come to think of it, I could have made this shoot work with any of the situations. Because what matters is not the camera, the person behind it. So speaking of, what about the shoot where the R5 did overheat on me and I had to shoot standard 4K? Well, since I had all of my settings set perfectly, the shots went super well and King turned out to be great. It was basically all I needed and that was enough. That's the lesson. You don't always need an upgrade. Sometimes what you have is enough. And this in particular is the reason why I'm just gonna stick with the R5. If you made it this far, thank you. You can do me a favor and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it as I put out videos like this mostly on a weekly basis. And as always, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, I'm out. See you guys later.